Tom from Alan and Tom, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 75217 Imperial Convex Transport. The set includes 622 pieces and retails for $90 US, releasing in summer of 2018. This set includes five minifigures, and we're going to be taking a look at those in just a minute. This set is really good box art. I actually really like the way this looks, other than, of course, the ugly corner box, which I hated. That was on all of the solo sets. You can flip it around to the back. And we have the actual set being shown off with all its flaps and such up, and a lot of the play features shown off. Let's get into the mini. Our first minifigure is Han Solo, and this is a pretty neat design. I like the torso and leg prints, which actually look really good, although I do wish the legs were dual molded as the painting would blend a little bit better. But overall, this minifigure just really isn't striking well with me. I don't like the face with the goggles, which actually is repeated on the other side as well. And aside from the torso design and the leg design, which are useful, there's nothing really new and nothing very interesting here. And I do wish that one of the faces had been included with out goggles. For instance, maybe the smiling face would have no goggles and the determined face would have goggles. I wish they had done something like that. He does include a small pistol, which is classic for Lego Han Solo minifigures. But that's really all there is to this dude. So let's move on. For many of the same reasons, I don't really like this Chewbacca and I'm not a fan of it. I'm not really a fan of any of the Han Solo movie Chewbacca's in general, but in particular this one for the goggles. I don't really like the headpiece thing. The torso and legs are of course the same as all of the other Chewbacca's that we've ever had since 2014 updated them, but I don't really like the way this looks. I mean, it's a cool new mold and I kind of like the feel of it, like the texture, but it just doesn't look very good. And I do like this blaster design though, like that's cool, which I broke, but um, I like the design of that. But yeah, so this is all one big headpiece as is normal with Chewbacca for me to drop pieces everywhere. But as is normal with Chewbacca, you have just this one big piece you have a plain dark brown torso piece and some plain legs that are printed with some fur on there to give the extension of design. Now, again, I don't really like this Chewbacca for most of the same reasons as Han Solo, so let's just move on. Most people think this guy is really overused, but this is an interesting new take on the character. Well, not really a character, but it's a new interesting take on the design of this trooper. And I like the way they took basic designs and they extended them a little bit to match the scene that this guy would be featured in. So he's different, but I think a lot of people are just sick of Imperial Gunners. I'm not. This is actually the first Imperial one I've ever gotten. I have a few First Order ones, and honestly, yeah, those are definitely overused. But I think in general, this guy, he had a problem in my books. Underneath, he has a face, and it's not the angry clone face, so another reason I'm happy about this dude. He has this new cloth piece here, which is really nice, and we'll see more of that in just a minute, and I'll show it off there. He has a beautiful looking torso and leg print, all in gun middle gray, and he has some dark brown colored hands. Overall, I really like this minifigure, and I'm glad that they included him here, even though some people disagree with me. We can all agree that these are the best minifigures in the set, right? There's two of these guys included, and these are the range troopers. I really like these original troopers from the film, other than the fact that they are completely un, uh, unexplained why they were never featured again in the original saga, which is something I find to be funny with the uh, Star Wars stories, is they introduce lots of new ships and designs and troopers and then they never come back for mysterious reasons. But I love the helmet for these guys. I love the design for these, both in movie and Lego. Of course, we have angry clone face. We have that same cloth piece, which I've gone ahead and stolen off the other one so we can have a look at it. So it's really just this thin piece of cloth with a little hole in it to attach to the minifigure's neck. All right there. The helmet will push this down a little bit and make it look even nicer. So, there's some beautiful printing on the torso and legs for this guy. He has a nice blaster, some back torso printing, 
and in general, just a really nice minifigure. I love some of the printing on this helmet, which we'll go ahead and get a zoom in on. Yeah, that's really nice. So, overall, this minifigure is really nice, and this is definitely the best figure in the set, and probably one of the main reasons I went ahead and bought this set, even though it's overpriced. As a side note, this set also includes a brick separator. So overall, this set is really nice. I love the build for this, and it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it would. Just from watching reviews and looking at images of this thing, I honestly didn't think it was going to be very big. And I was disappointed that they were charging $90 for this. I still don't think that that enormous price tag is justified here, but I think it's slightly made better by the size of this. It's actually really big, more than you might think. So let's go ahead and look at each part separately. The front part of this set is probably the best part of this set. I love the build for this. The design over the first few bags for this thing was just really fun to build. And overall, I did just enjoy building this thing. Now, to start off with, um, this thing is running on an enormous track of these pieces here, which allows it to move back and forth easily. So it can go all the way around. You can lift up this top section by pushing up right here, and you can see more of them. Um, in the instructions, it said there were 77 of these tiny individual pieces that had to be linked up one by one and then stuck onto this set. And in a little bit, probably towards the end, I may break down this set and show you the inner workings because they're pretty cool. You can also open up this flap right here. And there's not much inside, and you can do it on the other side as well because there's another one exactly the same. But we do have a little small black piece that you might be able to see there. And if we pull that over here, we can stick one of the range trooper's guns right there and fold it in so it has a nice little storage space underneath the track. Problem is, there's only one storage space, so you can't store both guns. And the biggest problem with that is there are two seats. If we open up this, we have access to one of the seats right there. We have a control panel, which is a sticker right there. And we have a seat right here, which we can easily slide one of our range troopers right into using one of those foot bracket pieces. Then you can close the lid and flip around, and you can do the same thing on the other side. Now, as I mentioned, there's nowhere to put this dude's gun. So, you kind of have to leave one of the guns by the side of the road if you really want to do anything. Because there's not a convenient space to keep that thing where it's not going to interfere with the mechanism that allows this thing to move. So, yeah, I wish it included more storage space for those things. It would have been pretty simple, but they didn't do it. And... I mean, what's done is done. In the back, there's this movable hitch right here, which will connect to the other um, side. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing apart a little bit to show you how the track mechanism works. So here it is torn down to the bare bones. As you can see, this thing is enormous. All these tracks, there's 77 of these. Yikes. So essentially, what's really happening is it's really just resting on a lot of wheels. So you have these wheel and tire pieces that we've seen often. And then this like makeshift thing, which is a lot bigger using those six by six round plates connected to a pin so that it gives it a nice shape. So they just get the shape there. And I think it's just interesting. I know this isn't really anything new or anything, you know, special. This is pretty simple stuff, but I still think it's kind of interesting just the way they get all those wheels in particular places. So they have a lot of stuff like this right here where it's hooked up through this center gray piece right there. We pull this off. Yeah, the track's going to fall apart, but... Um, yeah, it's literally just wheels. That's all it is. And then it hooks up up here through these yellow pieces at the top. Sorry about the bad camera angles, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's really it. Um, all these pins are just there to hold up the sidings um, for the actual vehicle. So now I gotta put all this back together. 
it before I can continue filming. But yeah, I just wanted to show that off a little bit. Like this. This is huge. Now that we've finished with the first half, we'll go ahead and take a look at the second half of the build. Starting off at the top, we have this rotatable turret right here, which is an interesting build that I think was a pretty cool uh, design. And we can easily fit our gunner in the seat right there. And there's two stud shooters, which we all know how those work. Just fire them off into the abyss. There's also this small hatch with a little lever to pull it open. And there's a little bit of standing space in there where we can put a minifigure, such as Chewbacca, to just stand right there. And that, that gives it a cool effect. Now, I actually really like that. So, um, around either side, there is some designs, which we'll take a look at. On this side, we have a computer screen. There's this black piece here and we have a lot of gray designs that flushes out with these sides really nicely and there's a hole with enough space for us to kind of stand a minifigure behind it but we have to do that from the inside now it's pretty much the same on the other side except for a couple slight differences there's no computer uh screen and then we have the other half of the hitch to hook it up to the front now i actually really like the build for this which i will show off here so this is really easy to take off as well. All you have to do is take off this piece on top and remove the hitch. And then it's pretty simple. All you have to do is pull this off. I like that they have this just kind of sticking out there. That's actually attached to the main portion of the build via this tile. Then they have this bracket piece hooked to the back of the black one. And that just sits right there. It aligns up perfectly with these black 2x2 two two extension pieces, which are positioned in a way so that we can hook up this uh, side here on these brown pieces. This is where it will connect. And then the gray, uh, the gray bracket piece will connect in the middle. And this is just high enough to squeeze right through that space and be perfectly flush it's genius it's genius i tell you genius it's that's actually really cool i didn't know that lego um tile and bracket with a plate in between would be the same as as a one by two gap so that was interesting i actually really like the design of that each side is exactly the same using this big plate piece here which we've all seen before as you can see, there is this gray piece right here that is connected on either side. And if you lift up on it, you can lift up the side and gain access on both sides to the interior. Now, there's enough space inside for minifigures to stand. There's enough headroom for them. So, that is pretty simple. We also have four of these coaxium canisters, which were also featured in the uh, Cloud Rider Swoop Bike set, which I got in my last haul. And they're just a simple build. There's four of them sitting on top of these yellow jumper plates there. They also use these long gray uh, gear runner pieces as designed there. And you just push down to close them. But also on the inside, we have a small ladder there with some clips on it for minifigures to climb up. And yeah, it works pretty well. It looks good. Um, the only problem I have is these jumper plates don't actually secure these very well. So often they'll just fall off and start rolling around. So yeah, they, that's just one little complaint that I have about the other side of this set. So we'll go ahead and close that down. And the way that we connect these is pretty simple. Um, so we have each side has half a hitch. We have this side has this. And then if we bring in the other side, we have the ability to hook this together like so. And this will pull and push the back side around. Now, I actually really like how smoothly this drives. I know some vehicles that use the treads don't drive very smooth, um, but this one actually does a really good job of that. I actually really like the way this functions. It functions well. Now, I think that's really all we have to say about the review. So, 
I guess we're going to just sign off and finish this review. One last play feature before we end is that we can pick up the um, turret and it is connected by this piece here and it can actually be moved to the front half and yeah it, that actually works really well as a play feature although I personally prefer to leave it in the back as it is shown on the box and in the instructions so yeah just forgot to mention. So yeah that's it for the video I hope you guys enjoyed I'm gonna go ahead and give this set a rating of 8 out of 10. I think the things that dock from it is mostly the price. $90 for 622 pieces is not right. This set should be priced at $70 and that is maximum. I think $70 is a fair price, but $80, even $80 would be pushing it. There's not even that many big pieces to really try and bump the price that high. Like, if there were a lot of big pieces, I might give them 80. But, like, these two plates, the ones on either side, that's that's all we've got that's actually really a big piece. So, $90 is completely unjustified for this set. Never buy this for $90. I would not recommend it to anyone at that price. Outside that price, yeah, I'd recommend it. I mean, if you get sets mostly for minifigures... Maybe not so much, because other than the range troopers, you're not getting that much out of this set. So, you know, I think it's a good 8 out of 10, because the build is just so well done, and it's so much fun. And I'm sure this is a big set with the, the younger Star Wars fans, especially those that have an obsession with trains, as this is pretty much a Star Wars train. So yeah, 8 out of 10 for this set. Thank you a lot for watching. We'll be back in a jiffy. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. And don't forget to comment down below with pretty much anything. And we'll be back in a jiffy.